This country is the oldest republic in the world, founded in 302 AD. Hello, welcome to Open Tierra. Today we're looking at San Marino, the world's oldest republic and a captivating microstate nestled in the heart of Italy. With its rich history, medieval architecture and stunning landscapes atop Mount Titano, San Marino offers a unique blend of charm and cultural allure. Join us and stay to the end to find out how this small country survived for over 1700 years. San Marino is a small country located on the Italian peninsula. With an area of just 61 square kilometers, it is one of the smallest countries in Europe. San Marino is completely landlocked and surrounded by Italy on all sides. The landscape of San Marino is predominantly hilly and mountainous. The highest point is Monte Titano, which rises to 749 meters above sea level. Monte Titano is part of the Apennine mountain range that runs down the length of Italy. The climate of San Marino is Mediterranean, with warm summers and mild winters. Temperatures can vary considerably between the coast and inland areas due to the mountainous terrain. Major rivers in San Marino include the Ausa, Marano and San Marino River. Due to its small size, there are no major natural lakes within the country. San Marino has a rugged, mountainous landscape dotted with small historic hill towns and villages. The capital city of San Marino sits atop Monte Titano, providing scenic views over the surrounding countryside. San Marino has a population of around 30,000 people. They have a largely homogeneous ethnic makeup. About 85% of the population are native Samarinese, meaning they trace their ancestry to the area before San Marino's official founding in 301 CE. The remaining 15% of the population are Italian immigrants who have settled in the country over the last century or so. Overall, the population is ethnically Italian with roots in the surrounding Romagna region. The official language of San Marino is Italian. Within Italian, the Samarinese speak a Romagnol dialect that has local variations from standard Italian. Romagnol is a language derived from Latin and still shares many vocabulary words and grammar structures with contemporary Italian. Most Samaranese are bilingual, speaking both standard Italian and Romagnol interchangeably in everyday life. The predominant religion in San Marino is Roman Catholicism. Over 97% of the population identifies as Catholic. The long history of San Marino has been tied to the Catholic Church. Many of the state's founding saints were Roman Catholic affiliates. Catholicism remains an integral part of Samarinese culture and daily life. Religious feast days, celebrations and traditions revolving around the church calendar are important parts of society. The small population of San Marino that is not Catholic mainly belongs to other Christian denominations. Though influenced by neighboring Italian cuisine, Samarinese food has a distinct regional flair featuring local ingredients and historic recipes. Some of the most iconic dishes of San Marino include bustrengo, polenta, nidi di rondine and veretta. A specialty of San Marino, bustrengo is a kind of fried bread made from egg, flour, milk and cheese. Crispy on the outside and soft inside, bustrengo is often served as an appetizer sliced into wedges and paired with cured meats, cheeses and vegetables. This simple fried bread has humble origins, with early versions created by frugal families using basic pantry ingredients. It remains a staple of Samarinese cuisine today. Polenta, a savory cornmeal porridge, is a dish seen across northern Italy and San Marino. Made from coarsely ground yellow or white cornmeal, polenta is slowly simmered into a thick creamy paste. In San Marino, polenta is frequently paired with rabbit or mushroom sauces and grated cheese. Polenta can be left to set, then sliced and grilled for a rustic meal. This hearty staple offers an inexpensive way to create filling satisfying dishes. Translating to swallow's nests in English, this unique Samarinese pasta gets its name from its shape, resembling the nest of a bird. To make nidi di rondine, bread dough is rolled flat, cut into strands, formed into circles, pinched in the center and deep fried. The fried pasta nests are paired with cheese, tomato sauce or other accompaniments. This whimsical pasta shape shows the creativity of Samarinese home cooks. According to legend, San Marino was founded in 301 CE when a Christian stonemason named Marinus fled persecution in Dalmatia, settled on Mount Titano and founded a small community of Christians. 
Marinus later became known as Saint Marinus, the founder and patron saint of the Republic of San Marino. Archaeological evidence indicates the area was inhabited since the Bronze Age, but Marinus's arrival marked the official founding of San Marino as its own independent state. In the medieval era, San Marino grew from a small settlement into a republic governed by its own statutes and laws. Due to its location high in the Apennine Mountains, San Marino offered a defensible position and served as a refuge for groups seeking independence from powerful regional neighbors. As its borders were well protected, San Marino remained neutral and was largely left independent by the series of powers controlling the Italian peninsula throughout the medieval period. When Napoleon Bonaparte conquered Italy at the end of the 18th century, he decided to leave San Marino in peace, considering it a model republic. San Marino grew in size at this time by being granted neighboring lands by Napoleon. However, after Napoleon's final defeat in 1815, the Congress of Vienna returned most of this territory to papal control. When Italy unified in the late 1800s, San Marino maintained its independence, despite being entirely surrounded by Italian territory. A treaty in 1862 with the Kingdom of Italy reaffirmed San Marino's sovereign status. San Marino also remained neutral during World War I and World War II, allowing it to survive despite the conflicts ravaging Europe. Today, San Marino maintains its status as an independent republic with its own government, laws and culture. Tourism and banking are major parts of its economy. With only around 30,000 inhabitants, San Marino is one of the smallest sovereign states in the world, having persevered in independence through much of European history since 301 CE. San Marino's economy was long driven by agriculture particularly wine production. Given its mountainous terrain, farming focused on small-scale cultivation of crops like grapes, olives and grain. Animal husbandry, especially of cattle and pigs, remained important over the centuries. Fishing, quarrying and stone carving also provided livelihoods early in San Marino's history. Manufacturing later became a key part of the economy, including products like fabrics, pottery and furniture. As transport links to San Marino improved in the late 19th century, tourism steadily grew as an economic sector. Visitors were attracted to the country's historic monuments, pristine mountain landscapes and Mediterranean climate. Hotels, restaurants and shops catering to tourists started appearing, especially in the capital city. Today, over 3 million people visit San Marino annually, making tourism the country's largest industry. Popular attractions include the Three Towers, medieval fortifications and sweeping views of the Italian countryside. In addition to tourism, San Marino now relies heavily on retail, banking and other service industries. It has leveraged its low taxes and Cayman Islands-like secrecy laws to become an international financial hub. Though lacking natural resources, San Marino has managed to build a prosperous economy by capitalizing on sectors like luxury goods, electronics and internet gambling. The country also issues collectible coins and postage stamps for the international market of philatelists and numismatists. Despite success in tourism and banking, San Marino faces hurdles posed by its small domestic market and lack of natural resources. It relies on Italy for key imports like food, energy and manufactured items. Keeping pace with digital technologies and internet-based services remains crucial, as does maintaining sound fiscal policies and regulatory frameworks to enable growth. But overall, San Marino has managed to transition from an agricultural to a post-industrial economy built on tourism, finance and global trade. If you enjoyed this video on San Marino, you'll love this next one.